My name is Pete Clark. I live here in Burnham and I direct the Liogau Festival. Neil Gow is a fiddle player, or was a fiddle player. He spent all of his 80 years living in and around this area and playing music. While he was in his teens, he uh, performed for no less than uh, Bonnie Prince Charlie and the Jacobites and uh, just became a celeb of his day. One of his fans was Robert Burns, so if you've got Burns as one of your fans, you must be a musician of note. We decided to um, start a Neil Gow festival 15 years ago because there wasn't really any significant memorial in and around the village which said Neil Gow was here and who he was. There's a headstone in the graveyard, there's a plaque on his cottage wall if you know where to look and if you know where his cottage is. So there's nothing obvious, nothing that leaps out and says to the visitor, Neil Gow was here. You know? And I, th I thought it would be nice for, um, for the village and for visitors to the village to learn something of, of Neil Gow and to go away maybe a few bars of tunes in the head and a, a, a knowledge of this man who's been overlooked, largely overlooked in Scottish history. So with that in mind we thought well we'll start a festival A because it's a living memorial to the man and his music and also um, ultimately it could lead to the, uh, the raising of sufficient funds to put up a, a, a memorial of sorts in the village, possibly a sculpture, that's what we've got in mind now. I'm Hannah Fisher. I started playing Neil Guy's music when I was about 10 or 11. I got taught by Pete Clark and uh, obviously being taught by Pete Clark you can't get away from learning all of Neil Guy's music. It's a great festival because there's not just um, concerts, there's workshops where you can come and try out an instrument, um, there's a Meet the Maker of the fiddle player um, and fiddle maker Joseph Ian Ross who I am very lucky to own one of his fiddles. There's auctions for paintings, obviously Pete paints, um, so there's a, a painting of Neil Guy's Cottage and it's usually the start of spring. Yeah, it's, it's a good time to come and see Dunkeld in the springtime. I think there's a lot of things special about the Neil Gow Festival. I, the, the word that comes to mind first of all is personal. There's a very personal aspect of it. There's something about making history alive in the present. And I think that is the value of what something like Pete does with the festival. It's a great way of celebrating the fiddle and, and drawing people in and getting them interested in the festival right from the word go. It is a bit of a high opener for somebody that's uh, lower level and they can't see all these players. Just to get a good stage to, to play on, it's um, it's a really nice atmosphere, it's a very uh, very nice audience who are appreciative of, of lots of obviously of all the different styles as well. I'm Rue Geddes, I'm studying classical violin in my first year at the RCS in Glasgow. And I am Neil Sutcliffe, I'm also in my first year of a classical degree in accordion at the RCS in Glasgow. So yesterday I played in the solo fiddle concert, um, which was great, it was terrifying but it was great. Um, it's rare that you get an audience of about 100 fiddle players. <laughs> We've just played on the main stage I suppose. Yeah, um, Burnham Arts Centre. This is actually the first year I've been. So it's just a great, great fun for me to, to come here and people have been very welcome, despite the fact I'm an accordionist at a fiddle festival. <laughs> so anyone that's not been to the festival before, I strongly encourage them to come. I think it's a fantastic uh, weekend and it's just, there's so much on, so much great music and loads of great people as well. 
As part of the programme, there are a couple of guided walks, one of which I call the Nilgau Walk, and I lead that on a Sunday. And what we do is we walk from Burnham, uh, along the banks of the Tay, and then follow the Bran upstream, and into the village of Inver, which is where Nilgau's cottage, uh, well, was and is. It's had a couple of rebuilds, but it's still there with a plaque on the wall. Um, on the plaque, there's a verse, a quotation from Burns' poem to Mr. Gow visiting Dumfries, and the verse says, um, Nay fabled wizard's wand, I trow, had ere the magic ert a gow, when we away if he draws his bow across his wondrous fiddle. Ten years ago, I got, I got a call from a, a gentleman in the borders who informed me that he had in his possession a fiddle which used to be Neil Gow's. Neil Gow actually said that it was his favourite fiddle. And the fiddle passed through several hands between now and then. Of the fiddles I played that belonged to him, that, that to me has the sweetest tone. It just, uh, it just speaks volumes if you just touch the string. This year I got a chance to play Neil Gow's fiddle, which was very exciting for me. I played Neil Gow's Lament for the Death of His Brother. I wonder how many times that tune's been played on the fiddle. You're holding that piece of wood and making it vibrate the same frequency that Neil Gow did 250 or more years ago. It's quite amazing to think that that fiddle has, has been playing those tunes for so many years, you wonder if it remembers. It's quite a feeling, it's quite a remarkable feeling. I said to Pete, have you ever read um, Nathan Milstein's book, the great um, Russian violinist? One of the things that Milstein said in his book was... The interesting thing about instruments like fiddles is um, you'll come across one during your life and you'll play them and you'll enjoy them and they'll be here, perhaps when you're no longer here. It visits you, you're not visiting the fiddle, you're just the caretaker of the instrument. And then on it goes. You're one of the stepping stones in a fiddle's existence. And I think it was very much in his thoughts last night. He said, I must remember and, and talk about that when he's, when he's talking about the, the fiddle. It's a nice way of, of putting things, of, of expressing the, the role of the, the instrument in, in the player's life. These kind of festivals are probably essential and uh, an integral part of Scottish music and Scottish culture. Especially um, focusing in on, on fiddle music in particular. I think focus festivals can be really important yeah. in terms of you know giving people time to reflect on the different parts of a tradition, the different kind of places that, that music comes from. It's a place for people to meet and gather and share a love and passion for the music. And it's a real chance to mix with people who are really interested in, in the tunes and where they came from, and a bit of the history behind our tradition.